the team was able to get the ball back after France was forced to clear the ball outside. Now that the team has already started moving forward, Argentina was able to play short and quick passes to overcome the counter pressure applied by France. And then, when Messi received the ball, he was able to slow it down for a second to give more time to McAllister to run behind the defensive line. Hello there everyone, it is Mitsu here and welcome back to another video on my channel. Today I'll analyze the World Cup final between Argentina and France. France started the match with this 4-2-4 formation, where Mbappe played on the left, Dembele on the right, and Griezmann played alongside Giro on top. Didier Deschamps wanted to apply high pressure during the first minutes of the match. The 4-2-4 shape was useful as it allowed France to be able to press and mark the passing options, as Argentina was using a back four. Similarly, this shape allowed France to force Emiliano Martinez to play multiple long balls, as the team was marking the midfield options. On the other hand, Argentina applied the traditional 4-3-3 formation, in which Di Maria played on the left-hand side of the pitch. Lionel Scaloni gave two key marking instructions to his players. The first was the marking of Griezmann from McAllister, and the second was the marking of Chaumini from Alvarez. These two marking instructions took place whenever France were building up, and during the high pressure applied. The high pressure was very effective, as Argentina was actually able to intercept multiple balls high up the pitch, and as you can see, given how the team was already pushing players up front, the team was able to perform link-up plays. During the defensive shape, France used this 4-5-1 formation. As you can see, the spaces between the midfield and defensive lines are not very compact. Therefore, Lionel Scaloni was concentrating on positioning multiple players between the lines, and attempting to go for the direct passes. Rodrigo de Paul and Enzo Fernandez had important roles in this game. At the beginning of the match, France were able to block their passing lanes while applying the high pressure. This forced Argentina to go for multiple side passes and negative possession. However, this didn't stay for long as Rodrigo de Paul would drop down to grab the attention away from Enzo Fernandez, who would then be free in the midfield. The same concept was applied even when France started lowering their defensive block. Rodrigo de Paul would drop down to allow the full back to push high up the pitch, and at the same time, pull the attention of all the players applying the high pressure. Marking Enzo Fernandez and Rodrigo de Paul was something that even disturbed France during the defensive phase. As you can see, they kept a low and a compact defensive block, while Mbappe and Giroud are outside strictly marking the two players. Using such a low block did not help, as Di Maria was winning all the one-on-ones against Dembele, who had to foul him in the box even on having up to 9 players in the penalty area. As a reaction, France started applying high pressure again. Argentina concentrated on spreading their players on the flanks, to have a chance when clearing the ball away. To counter this high pressure, we started seeing Messi dropping down in multiple occasions, as he couldn't receive the balls when the back line was going for long clearances. Before we continue, I would like to let you guys know that the Econo Winter Symposium will take place on the 28th of December. As you can see on the screen, there will be different professional panelists who will be talking about a topic where he or she is an expert. During the session, there will also be competitions between participants, where you will have the chance to win amazing prizes. Make sure to sign up using the code MITSUJR from the link in the description. Enzo Fernandez and Rodrigo de Paul started pushing higher up the pitch whenever France were using a low block. Didier Deschamps was not certain of what he wants out of this first half as the team was applying high pressure for 3 minutes, then doing the complete opposite and using a low block for 15 minutes. The team was also struggling in marking the players on the flanks, as players like Mbappé and Dembélé was not efficient during the defensive phase. Messi went for a lot of these switches to the left. I've talked about these switches a lot in the previous videos, and Lionel Scaloni had the Maria for this game for this specific reason. Lionel Scaloni played a significant role in the second goal. You can see in these pictures how Argentina was not pressing France, but he kept asking the players to push forward and move out of the penalty area. The team was able to get the ball back after France was forced to clear the ball outside. Now that the team has already started moving forward, Argentina was able to play short and quick passes to overcome the counter pressure applied by France. And then, when Messi received the ball, he was able to slow it down for a second to give more time to McAllister to run behind the defensive line. In the meantime, Di Maria was also sprinting forward, so Messi placed the ball to the other side to grab the attention away from McAllister. And then, again by playing the first time pass, McAllister was able now to receive the ball. France was in a very bad defensive situation, as the players were all positioned on one side of the pitch, after applying the counter pressure obviously, something that left Di Maria completely unmarked on the left hand side of the pitch. And so, Argentina scored the second goal. Similar to what happened earlier, France started applying high pressure again as a reaction to the second goal. 
Argentina started using this flat midfield shape during the last minutes of the first half to secure the lead, as the entire team started moving backwards a little bit. Whenever Mbappe had the ball on the left-hand side, Rodrigo de Paul would immediately provide the defensive support to the fullback in order to outnumber Mbappe in the 2 vs 1 situation. This forced Mbappe to move to a deep position, which allowed Argentina to keep a very compact defensive line. This video is brought to you by Play by Metrica Sports, the fundamental tool for every coach and analyst. Create and manage all your video analysis in one platform. Use the coupon MitsujiR at the checkout for a 10% discount. Moving to the second half, France started this half by applying high pressure and marking the midfield passing options. On the other hand, Lionel Scaloni was very active again on the sideline, asking his players to push forward as they stayed at the back to secure the lead. Argentina kept their two main marking tactics. McAllister was marking Griezmann and Alvarez remained around Chiamini when France was building up. Argentina faced some problems to build their attacks on the ground in the second half, as the French players were strictly marking all the midfield options. Lionel Scaloni started settling his team down a little bit and going for a low block. The team stopped applying high pressure and depended on the counter-attacks. The attacking transitions from Argentina was really noticeable. As you can see in this example, the team is forcing France to stretch the defensive line, while at the same time, still having three players in a deep position. Rodrigo de Paul started positioning as a right midfielder to cover Leo Messi defensively. Kylian Mbappe was struggling to receive the ball whenever he was positioned inside the defensive block of Argentina. Lionel Scaloni was able to adapt to different scenarios in this match. Argentina applied this 4-4-2 formation heading towards the last 20 minutes of the match. Argentina's main problem was how the team was reacting to the loss of possession. The two goals were scored directly after intercepting the ball. You can see how the players are positioned close to each other for link up plays, but when the ball is intercepted, they were easily hit by a long ball. Similarly, Messi lost the ball here, and then Coman directly went for the long ball to Mbappe, who got the advantage from the blindside run. Argentina had to react quickly, and so they applied some high pressure. Messi was going for the direct approach in the last minutes. He preferred playing in a deep position. Moving to the extra time. France started this half by applying high pressure again. Lionel Scaloni made a very good substitution in bringing in Paradis. He was very fresh compared to the players around him, so he was able to drop down to receive the ball and connected plenty of passes on the ground. He was also able to play a lot of disguised passes. We saw the direct approach by Messi again in how he went for these direct passes in the middle over the usual switches on the left. The team was able to perform link-up plays between 8 players from France, but Lautaro Martinez missed the chance. Argentina then started applying high pressure again towards the end of the half. Although Lautaro Martinez missed multiple chances, his high work rate helped Argentina exploit the poor positioning of the French defenders. You can see how in this attack, Argentina were able to keep the possession by performing link-up plays, although it was a 6 vs 3 situation. The poor defensive awareness was seen again in how the 4 players here are only looking at the ball, leaving Lautaro Martinez unmarked and onside. After the goal, France got some corners in which Mbappe was always positioned here to win the second balls. He actually won the second ball, and was able to win the penalty after the handball. The poor defensive awareness was also seen on the other side now, as the defenders were pulled out of possession here, so one long ball from Konate was enough to send Randalo Kulumwane through on goal, but Emiliano Martinez with probably what will be the save of the tournament, was able to stop France from winning the World Cup. So that was it guys, I hope you've enjoyed the analysis. I'll be dropping some videos soon discussing the overall tactics of Argentina, I'll also be dropping a video talking about the historical achievement of Morocco. If you want me to analyze a specific player from the World Cup, let me know in the comments down below. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.